Today, I'm going to walk you through the process of finding the best concentrated liquidity pools in decentralized finance across various different platforms like Uniswap, Orca, Radium, and more. Now, diving right in, I'm Jake Call, the founder of Metrics Finance, and I have one goal in mind when building Metrics Finance, and that's to create a software that I would personally use as a retail investor in liquidity pools. So everything that we develop is something that I truly use in my portfolio. I've worked with different crypto investment and hedge fund companies in the past, so I know exactly what data to look at when it comes to actually analyzing different concentrated liquidity pools. And that's exactly where we get our inspiration from when building new features. And if you guys want to see something new, make sure to drop a like and subscribe when notifications turned on, but also drop a comment down below and let us know what you want to see. But diving in, we're going to go ahead and launch the app and head over to the Discover page. Because on the Discover page, this is where we're going to be analyzing different concentrated liquidity pools. Now, if you do not have Pro version, you will be unable to access a couple different exchanges, including Aerodrome and Velodrome, but also you won't be able to select multiple exchanges at once. And we are currently running a promo code where if you use code YEAR, you are getting four months for free on a yearly plan and currently yearly plans are $400 per year but if you use the promo code year you're going to get it for $320 for a total year which is a pretty hefty discount considering that normally it's $40 per month but the first thing that we're going to do as a liquidity provider is select our exchanges so let's just say we want to look on uniswap quick swap pancake swap and sushi swap we would select those four now in my scenario i want to look on uniswap pancake swap as well as orca those are the three that I want to look at. I don't want to look at anything else, just those three right there. And then as far as networks go, I'm going to select the Ethereum network, the Arbitrum network, the Polygon network, the Base network, and the Binance Smart Chain network, and of course, the Solana network. Now, the reason why I select these ones is because Uniswap is most prominent on Ethereum, but also has some pretty strong dominance over on the Arbitrum network. Additionally, Uniswap does have a pretty strong dominance on the Base network as well. It's the second largest decentralized exchange, and it is the first largest decentralized exchange over on the Polygon network currently. And then PancakeSwap does have pools over on Ethereum, but PancakeSwap has a very, very high dominance of the Binance Smart Chain network. It's the largest DEX over there. And then, of course, Orca is the largest DEX on the Solana network when it comes to concentrated liquidity in specific. As far as this calculation range goes, I like to invest over a period of 30 days. So therefore, I'm going to use a 30-day calculation range. But when it comes to your investment horizon, you want to select the preset that most suits you. So for example, if I want to be in a pool for about 30 days or so, I'm going to select a 30-day calculation range versus if I want to be in it for 14 days, I'd select 14. And basically what calculation range does is it decides how many days of volume, fees, and data just to factor into your overall calculation when it comes to this APR that it's estimating over here. Like, for example, we could see ETH USDC is about 35% right now, whereas if we were to look at seven days, you could see it's about 20%. What does that tell us? That tells us yield in the past seven days is a lot lower simply due to the fact that there is not as much volume as there was 30 days ago, basically. And we'll dive into the nitty gritty of all of this later on, but let's just go ahead and start out with a couple different pools. I'm going to go ahead and use Ethereum to USDC, and that's going to be my Ethereum network pool. I also want to look at some stuff over on the Arbitrum network, Base network, Polygon, and all those other exchanges that I selected. So I'm just going to uncheck the Ethereum network, and I'm going to look at something like this WBNB to BSC USD one over here. So this is basically BNB to USDT. I'm going to favorite this one as well. And then from there, I could go and look at some base pools. I could look at some Solana pools, Polygon, Arbitrum. I'm just going to narrow it down to Solana because I want to show you something different because the rest of those are EVM network. And in this scenario, when filtering by TVL, I don't really get too many opportunities that I really, really want to deploy into. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is start to apply some different filters. First thing that I can do, I can select must include assets. So maybe I want to have Sol in a pool. Then I can do Sol as my must include asset right over here. And it's going to show me positions that have Sol in there. And then maybe I I want to look at stuff that has an APR higher than 50%. Remember this fees APR right here uses an average of plus 25% minus 25% range basically. So do keep in mind that if you tighten up, you're going to get higher than this. Whereas if you broaden, you're going to get lower than this basically. And then TVL wise, maybe I want to look at stuff that's above $3 million. I can filter that. If I want to do like lower than a specific amount, I can also include that there. And the other thing that I would be taking a look at would be price volatility. But in this scenario, I'm just going to look at Jito Soul to Jito over here basically. So I'm going to go ahead and favorite this one as well. And then I could go ahead and select every single network and every single exchange and I can take off my my filters and that's going to start to show me all the pools that I have favorited. Now one thing that I'm going to go and do is check out Ethereum to USDC on other networks because I don't know what the best possible return is because as you probably know Ethereum to USDC is not only going to be over on Uniswap Ethereum network it will also be on Uniswap
Uniswap Arbitrum, it'll be on PancakeSwap Ethereum, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the simulate page just in a new tab. And then from there, I will select this pair function. This pair function is our bread and butter. It's gonna be what allows us to identify Ethereum to USDC or even Ethereum to USD opportunities on multiple networks and exchanges. So here we can select every single network and exchange, or we can just select the ones that we wanna use, which is what I'm going to do in this situation. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is select the networks that we wanna be on. And as I mentioned earlier, Ethereum is fine for me, Arbitrum is fine for me, Polygon, as well as Base, as well as BNB Chain, and of course Solana. So what this is going to do is analyze Ethereum to USDC across all these different networks. And it pulls the networks that these assets are on and crunches the pairs together using CoinGecko API. So as long as it's over on CoinGecko, then you can utilize this tool. And to further describe that, if we pull up USDC over on CoinGecko and you scroll down to where it says contract and you notice these three little dots right here, this is where USDC is listed. So this is exactly where we're pulling the data from. But occasionally there's going to be other derivatives of USDC that aren't the same USDC as native, but maybe they're like bridge USDC over on the Arbitrum network, like USDC.e, for example. We have a back-end whitelist for those types of assets, and if you guys want to request a specific asset to be added to that whitelist, you can click this little question mark right here. Now, what I'm going to do is select Ethereum as well as USDC, and then I'll wait for it to load up, and it will pop open with all the different Ethereum to USDC liquidity pools right here on this list. Occasionally, it will take 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how fast your computer is, but do keep in mind, it's going in its pulling all of this data directly from the decentralized exchanges and for stuff like Ethereum to USDC, as you can see, there are a lot of pools and we didn't even select every single network and exchange. Now, one other thing that we can do is we can check the similar assets and that's not only going to show us the Ethereum to USDC, but it'll also show us Ethereum to USDC.e. It'll show us Ethereum to USDT. It'll show us staked Ethereum paired with USDC and other derivatives that are whitelisted just like that. So this is exactly how we can find the best return for a specific pair. If we take a look over at what we saw on the discover page about 35 percent on average and if we take a look at some of these other ones we got 37 percent over here and then we also have a couple others that are down below that have a similar return like over on the polygon network we got 35 percent now if we're over on the base network on pancake swap we got a 54 percent apr but keep in mind this has a hundred thousand dollars of tvl so it's much much lower in terms of tvl which means that it might not be as consistent we also got ethereum to die on arbitrum 300k of TVL, but doing 78% APR. And if we keep on scrolling down this list, we will continue to identify different opportunities. Now, me personally, I'm just going to go ahead and go with the one that has a crazy amount of TVL because I enjoy consistency, but I also deploy large amounts of capital into liquidity pools. So I want to make sure that I'm looking at ones that I can deploy large amount of capital into a liquidity pool. And then from there, I can pull open the simulation page and I could choose my range here and it'll spit out the estimated APR. So for example, if I were to do a range of something like this, or maybe my top price was 4,000 and then my bottom price was something like 3,000, so 3,000 to 4,000 basically. And our price is right in the middle of there, so we got about 50 50 of each asset. A hundred thousand dollar deposit is making me roughly two hundred and twenty six dollars per day. That's an eighty three percent APR. Now, a few considerations here. We always need to adjust the current price to make sure that we're looking at an actual realistic return. If we adjust the price over here, you'll notice that we're getting roughly thirty eight percent APR. Well, what's the difference? There's more liquidity over here and less liquidity over here. So if people were to move their liquidity or if the price were to revert back to where there was more liquidity, we are getting a lower return. So we just need to keep that in mind. And then we can also adjust this volume history maybe to something like two days. And using two days, we get about 35% APR. So that's gonna line up with what we saw over on the Discover page. Because keep in mind, calculation range is what decides how many days is being factored into your calculation. So 30 days, for example, we had average volume and then we had super high volume and then we had average volume and now we're going a little bit higher so it's realistic to only use the recent days of data which two days would accommodate for that now if you guys want me to do a deep dive into how you can actually find the ranges how you can go and estimate accurate results and use this simulation page and build out your entire portfolio make sure to drop a like and subscribe notifications turned on also give us feature suggestions down below in the comment section i'll see you guys in the next one and peace out